So, Gigantic is a game of the past. It's been around before, but it did, like, it initially released years ago. They had to shut it down. I believe it was back in 2018. But now, Gigantic is back and it's come back with the Rampage Edition, which did release today, April the 9th, 2024, on Steam and other platforms for around £15. The game launched with two new heroes, new maps, and a brand new mode called Rush, which is actually the default mode in this game. And during the intro of the game, you are shown the ropes of your attacks and your skills. It's a very brief intro, doesn't last too long at all. And then what they do is they put you into a couple of different matches of the rush mode in order to show you the ropes of that mode as well, which is basically a few different areas on the map that are going to be activated at different times. And what you have to do is wait until they have built up and then you need to go and either collect from your ones or steal from your opponent's ones. And what you are doing with that is stealing the energy from them in order to build up to 100 power, which is then going to make their guardian because you start the game with a guardian. You have your own one, then the enemies have theirs. And once you've got to 100 power, the guardian on the opposing team becomes vulnerable. There's a little timer to give you time to sort of like prepare your attack and stuff. And the rush mode is the first team to kill the guardian that wins. And it's teams of five players, two teams of five players, because this game is a MOBA. Now, luckily, in this game, you can change your key bindings because I wasn't a fan of the default keys and I tried playing with a controller as well. On the Steam version of the game, I picked this one up on PC, but the controller wasn't great for me personally. And also trying to change your vertical sensitivity doesn't actually work. There is a slider there like there is for the horizontal. The slider goes from 1 to 10, but it actually jumps between 1 and 10. You cannot set it to anything else unless for some reason you're using a mouse you are then able to so if you're thinking of playing the game on console there might be a little bit of a problem until patches are put out for the game and the gigantic the rampage edition features 25 heroes and there's a bunch of different creatures that are only available in the clash mode that you are able to summon that are going to help you in battle by doing things like revealing enemies on the minimap and also creating protective walls as well as doing things like healing you as well and then as well as rush clash and there's also also custom matches there is going to be a season there's a season menu it says coming soon you also then have guides in the game so that you can learn more about the game and the modes and stuff and there's a practice arena that's going to let you test different heroes and skills to figure out what you are comfortable with because there are builds in this game as well then when you are searching for a match of rush for an example you are able to set your role and your hero preferences which is going to help the matchmaking become tailored to your preference and i thought that was quite a decent feature it lets players kind of master their heroes and skills and stuff of their choice but when i was playing i just i left it all default and just jumped into matches now when it comes to the matchmaking when the matchmaking actually works it is pretty good with crossplay enabled because crossplay is a feature in the game with it enabled the first search took over two minutes didn't find a match and then what I did was cancelled it and started searching again. And I then found a match within 20 seconds. And then pretty much every single match after that only took a few seconds to actually team me up with other players. So the first initial search was awful, but then it got very, very good to where it's only taken a few seconds to find matches. And when it comes to character selection, you cannot have two players using the same character in a match. So you do have to be very quick to select your character. But if someone does choose your character, like spawn into the game, then they die and they decide to change character. You can then, when you die in game, switch to your favorite character mid-match. It's just as long as someone else on your team isn't using that character, you are able to use it yourself. And then probably my favorite feature in the game is the fortunes. They are like challenges, for example, getting kills and assists. And what these are going to do is earn crowns when you complete them. And those crowns can then be used to purchase skins for your characters and your weapons. But then as well as the character levels, you've also got an account level. And in order to level up your account, you need to level up your characters. So for an example, say you start the game, you're at like character level one, you're account level three. When you reach character level two, you'll go to account level four. Four, then say you switch over to another character that's level one you level those up once so they go to level two your account then levels up as well so each time you level up a character your account will also level up 
And what you have to do is reach account or profile level 10 in order to unlock the clash mode. I never got that far, but we'll explain. Like, I'll, I'll let you guys know exactly what happened and why I didn't do that a little bit further into the review. But based on how the characters and your account levels up, I would say it's beneficial to find a character that you like and work on leveling them up. Just because it's going to be easier to get kills and assists if you're comfortable with the character. If not, and you fancy uh, the mix and match every single game you're playing, then there's no harm in trying a load of different characters because like, if they're low level, they're going to be a lot easier to level up because there's less XP required to actually level them up. And upon leveling up your characters to then level up your account, you are going to earn a tickets. And these tickets can be used to unlock the characters that are locked when you first start playing the game. So all of the cosmetics, all of the locked characters can, at least for now, be unlocked by playing the game. There are no microtransactions in this title. And then the game itself, it, like when you're in matches, it can be incredibly frustrating, but it can also be very, very fun. If you are playing the game with randoms, expect to get very bad teams quite often. But if you add in a couple of friends then you can easily dominate matches. Sometimes the random teams can be quite good. So you can still have a lot of fun playing this game solo, but it's much harder because of that lack of communication. And there is also a decent amount of maps in the game, so you're not going to get bored due to a lack of maps. And then, I'm not sure how often it happens, but it did happen to me a couple of times. And this is what's actually going to lower the score quite a lot for this review. Basically what happened is I jumped into Rush, I played an entire match, there were around 10 minutes or so, and when I got to the end of that match, it says that it failed to retrieve the results of the match, which meant I made absolutely no progress towards fortunes or challenges, I made absolutely no progress through a character or my account level either. And as I said, this happens twice. It wasn't just a one-off. And it gets very annoying if you're like really getting into a match, you start doing well, like incredibly well. The match ends, you think, yes, I've done loads of like progress towards my fortunes just to get to the end of it for the game to tell you that it cannot retrieve the results. You get nothing for it. And then when it comes to unlocking the clash mode, you can probably reach level 10 fairly quickly, but it will depend as progression gets slower, the more you play with the same character. So the higher their level, the more XP you need. And I'm going to estimate about two to three hours to reach level 10 and unlock the second mode. I ended up playing around two hours, 45 minutes of the game, but I was like typically using the same character over and over again. And I was very, very close to level eight when I stopped playing. So basically what happened, like the reason I stopped playing is the servers wouldn't put me in a match at all and once i restarted the game it just wouldn't let me even sign into the servers the servers are having massive massive problems when the game first launched i jumped on it pretty much straight after it downloaded it was absolutely fine there was no issues with the servers whatsoever for a good two to maybe two and a half hours around that sort of time. But the moment more people started getting into the game, because at the time I started playing, there was probably about 1,500 people playing on Steam. And now there's over 5,000. These servers have gone to complete shit. For the most part, across all platforms, you can't actually join the servers. You can't sign into this game at all. But the server issues did get worse and worse. So they gave me a lot of false hope. I was able to eventually get back in I played a full match to get to the end of it, just to get that stupid error again. Failure to retrieve match results. So I had multiple matches in this game, no progression, no rewards, a complete waste of time. So at that point, I gave up. And based on the launch of the game, there are server issues. They should hopefully be fixed soon, but I'm adding them in because that's part of my experience. The graphics in the game are not the best. It does feel quite dated with the graphics. The engine is relatively old. Not only that, I'm pretty sure it's locked to 60 FPS. I don't know if that's going to be the case across console and everything as well. But with the server issues, with the graphics and like the putting everything as a factor into this review, one thing I've got to mention is the price point is not actually that bad. It's like 16, 17 pound or something with a little bit of a launch discount. I think I spent like 13 pound 50 on it. Not bad at all. But with the price point being not too bad, this uh, the game's awfully bare bones. There's only two playable modes. And yes, there are 25 characters with the majority of them being unlocked from the moment you start the game up but with that i really really like that there are no microtransactions just the fact that you can play the game you can level up your account level earn tickets and unlock characters with that i, I feel that's very very good if they did it and they have microtransactions to buy their tickets and unlock the characters it would have been a complete different story but putting everything together the gameplay
gameplay, the graphics, the servers, and everything like that at launch, because this game could get better down the road. What I'm going to do is give this one a 6.5 out of 10. I really feel with some quality of life updates, some new content and server fixing, the game could be a lot better. However, with my experience and everything that's happened throughout it, I feel that a 6.5 is definitely fair. This is a fun game. I'm not saying it's a bad game. But how long is that fun going to last? With random teams every match, unless you've got a set team that you're jumping into the game with. And all of that with only two game modes being available at launch. With one of those modes being locked until you are account level 10. The fun could last for an hour or two. It could last tens of even hundreds of hours. It all depends on exactly who is playing the game their preference of game and how quickly they get bored in a multiplayer environment with exactly how this game works. But yeah, my final rating for Gigantic Rampage Edition from the launch of the game and my time with it, which is a little under three hours, is a 6.5 out of 10. And what we are going to do is leave that video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff about this game and what you would rate it in the comments. And I will see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.